All right, peace and love to the saints who are watching this video. I want to start off by giving all praises to the Most High, through the only begotten Son, the, the, the anointed Savior, who died and rose again. But uh, let's get straight into this. So we're not going to play any games. What is Satan? Who is Satan? And what are devils? And who are demons? Let's get straight into it. So right here, as you can see on my screen, we're starting off with 2 Corinthians in chapter 4. I'm going to start at verse... I'm going to ask to start at verse 4. In whom the God of this world... So who is the God of this world? Let's keep reading. Hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of the Messiah who is the image of the Most High should shine unto them so the God of this world whatever this world is has blinded the minds of the people that don't believe right I'm going to skip on to verse 6 for the Most High who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts, the ones that believe, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of the Most High in the face of the Messiah Savior. Right? So let's find out who the God of this world is. As you see on my screen, I got the Prince of the Air. So we're going to Ephesians 2, verse 2. Right? Let's zoom in. Where in time pass, ye walk. Matter of fact, let me just click on the whole chapter. So I'm going to start at verse 1. And you hath he quickened. Now, quickened means made alive. That means made alive. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. Where in time pass, ye walked according to the course of this world. Uh-oh, here we go. So remember, the God of this world has blinded the minds of those that believe that don't believe. So here we go. What is this world? According to the prince of the power of the air. So there's a prince that controls this world. Right? By permission. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So whoever this prince is, this messenger of the power of the air, has blinded the minds of those that don't believe. Right? And he worketh in the children that children of disobedience, among whom also we all had conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, uh-oh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Oh, check that out. I didn't want to go there yet, but we might have to go there. So, check this out. In whom we all had conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh. Wait a minute. So, our flesh. Let's go to Romans 8. Let's go. We're going to get into it. Before we go to Romans 8, I'm going to go to Ephesians 6. Keep up with me now. So the prince of, the, of this world has blinded, which is also called the God of this world. Because if you haven't watched my video um, on what are angels, angels are called gods. They're not the most high, but they are called gods. But anyways... Let's see. Ephesians 6. I want to go to verse 12, I want to say. Yeah, verse 12. Let me zoom in. All right. Bear with me. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness. Who's the ruler of darkness? Of this world. 
here we go. So this world is darkness against spiritual wickedness in high, place, in high places. So the prince of this world or the prince of the air, the god of this world, is the ruler of darkness. What's darkness? Quick precept. Isaiah 5 and 20. Woe unto them that call evil good. So the context is evil and good. And good evil. Right? Let me zoom out. That put darkness. That put evil. For light. So they put evil for good. And good for evil. Check that out. So the ruler of this world is darkness. I just wanted to give the basic breakdown before we get super deep into it. Because this is a real lesson. Right? So follow along with me. Remember the flesh and blood. Remember the flesh part. The lust of the flesh. Because we about to dive into it. So let's get into the flesh part. That we just read in Ephesians 2. Matter of fact, before we even go there, let me refresh your memory. Matter of fact, let's just get into it. <laughs> Romans. You want to go to Romans? We're going to go to chapter 8. We're going to get into it. All right. Romans 8. We're going to start from the top. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in the Messiah. The, the anointed Savior. That's what I'm going to call him. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Why is that? Why is that? Let's keep going. For the law of the spirit of life and the Messiah Savior, the anointed Savior, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, that's why. Because the law of the spirit of life and the Messiah frees you from the law of sin and death. Now, what's the law of sin and death? Let's keep reading. For what the law could not do and what, and oh, I'm sorry, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sendeth his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, now, God, let's talk about God for a second. Quick precept. Quick precept, right? Let's find out what God is for a second. I'm going to go to John. Matter of fact, I'm going to just type it in as quick as this way. It's a kind of giveaway that me typing this in is giving away the answer. But let's get into it. So let's talk about what God is for a second. So God, the most high God, First of all, is a spirit. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, the most high God is a spirit. But is he an evil or is he a good spirit? Remember, I'm just taking it slow before we get super deep into it. Now, this is 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5, right? This then is the message which we have heard of him and declaring to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So the most high through the Messiah is light. He's good, as we read in Isaiah 5 and 20, and there's no wickedness in him at all. Just wanted to clarify that. So he's a spirit and he's a spirit of righteousness, of light. Right. But let's go back to Romans 8. So there is no condemnation for walking in the Messiah who is light, right? But if you walk in the flesh, you walk in the law of sin and death. Let's see how. But what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his only, his son, his own son, the likeness of sinful flesh. Check that out. So the flesh is sinful. And for sin condemneth sin in the flesh. So if you walk in the spirit, you condemn the sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law 
might be fulfilled in us. So the law, the righteousness of the law is being fulfilled in you if you walk in the spirit of the Messiah. Right? Who walk not after the flesh. See, it keeps talking about the spirit in the flesh. Why? God, we got light, darkness. Heaven, hell. Spiritually, heaven, earth. The one we can see, you know, the sky and the ground. Let's keep going. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So we got flesh and then we got spirit. Now remember Ephesians 6 12, we wrestle not after the flesh, but against uh, rulers of darkness, which will be the prince of the air, the God of this world, who is darkness, right? Let me prove that. Let me get a quick, another quick precept. We are, this, this is, we got to get into it. We're going to cover all grounds. Let's go to uh, Hebrews. Yeah, Hebrews chapter 2. Yep, chapter 2. And we're going to go to verse 14. Watch this. Let's get into it. Verse 14. King James Version. Because we about to find out. First of all, we already found out that Satan. Let's, let's just get into it. Enough talk. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. He also himself likewise took part of the same. Now, remember, flesh and blood is sinful. He also took part of the same. Likewise, as we just read in Romans 8, right? He came and condemned. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh and condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be filled in us. So like, right? But let's go back to Hebrews 2. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death, check that out, through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. So the devil has the power of death, right? Now you might say, how do we know, you said all of this, but how do we know that Satan is the devil in this context? Well, let's see, right? Right? Let's get into it. I know it's Revelation, but uh, here we go. Revelation 20. In verse 2, let me show you. Let's get into it. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent. That old serpent is talking about in Genesis, right? The serpent that tricked Eve. If you don't know the story, go, go to Genesis. The serpent that tricked Eve unto basically disobeying the Most High, which is the devil and Satan. So the devil is Satan, right? The devil is Satan. That's plain as it can be, right? So back to Hebrews 2 and verse 14. So for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, who is the children he's talking about? Let's keep reading. He also himself likewise took part of the same that do through death, he might also destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. So the devil is the prince of the air, the god of this world, wicked, darkness, <laughs> right? Has the power of death, right? What else does he have the power of? Let's go to Colossians 1. All right. 
Let's go to Colossians 1 and verse 18. Let's get into it. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to start there. And he is the head of the body. Uh, uh, no, actually, I don't. Um, actually, I want 13. That's what I want. Who hath, who hath, it's talking about the Messiah. Right? Let's prove that. Given, verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, so in, in righteousness, in good, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Check that out. And had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. So what's the power of darkness? The power of death. Which the power of death, darkness, the power of death, Satan, the devil. What has the power of death and the power of darkness? Satan. So let's get into that. Let's go back to Romans 8. Right? It's talking about if you walk in the spirit of the Messiah, which is faith, right? Then, you know, you're not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit do mind the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded, here we go. Here we go. This is this is just the truth. For to be carnal, what does carnal mean? Carnal mean earthly, fleshly minded. To be fleshly minded. Watch this. Watch this. To be fleshly. He already explained it in the I don't even have to pull up a precept. He already said it. That do do uh for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. So right? So for to be fleshly minded is death. Now remember, who has the power of death? We just read it. The devil, Satan. So your earthly mind. And we read in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, right? The God of this world has blinded those that don't believe. So your earthly mind <laughs> is death. So what has the power of death? Your earthly mind. Your earthly mind is safe. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the earthly mind is enmity against God. So that means it's literally... An adversary against God. Who's the adversary against God? <laughs> I told you. This is, I told you. If you made it to this part of the video. If you made it to this part of the video. Then you know the truth. Right? Enmity against God. What does Satan mean? Adversary. Check that out. Check that out. Enemy of good. Enemy of good. So your earthly mind is enmity against God. So your earthly mind is Satan. But don't fear, because if you walk in the spirit of your mind, in the Messiah, let's keep going. Then you're walking in the light, which is righteous. You're not walking after the lust of the flesh. We're going to get into the flesh. For it is not subject to the law of God, indeed, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But watch this. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit. Now, if any man have not the spirit. Of the Messiah, he is none of his. And of the Messiah be in you, 
the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But the spirit of him that raised up the Messiah, which is the most high from the dead dwell in you. He hath raised up the anointed from the dead shall also quicken your, uh, your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Now remember, the power of darkness, power of death is your earthly mind, is your fleshly mind. Right? That's why we see in Romans 7 and 20, we started 23. But I see another law in my members. What's his member? His body. Warring against the law of my mind, his spirit. Right? And Brick, let's prove that. Matter of fact, let's get into it. <clears throat> you have two. Is let's say let's just get into it. Enough talking. I said I was gonna get in. I said I was gonna go deep into it. So, um, shout out to everybody that kept watching this. You know, cause now you know the truth, <clears throat> or you might be confused. So let's just keep giving examples. So let's start at verse one. Hebrews 1 and 1. God, so that means the spirit, <clears throat> who at sundry times, which mean different times, and in divers manner, manners, which mean different manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, that would be the Messiah, the anointed Savior, whom he hath appointed heir, so he's the ruler of all things, by him also he made the worlds. Now, what is the worlds? That's a plural. That's plural. What's the world? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Let's get into it. So, it's two worlds. It's two worlds. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1. So, you got heaven. And you have earth, you have darkness, you got light. That's why it says in verse two, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So the earth was dark. What about the heaven? What about the heaven? <laughs> I'm telling you. And also, so if it's two worlds, let's check this out. Remember, we got the flesh, then we got the spirit. We got the carnal mind, we got the spiritual mind that we just read about in Romans 8, right? But how is that so? Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Uh, actually, let me just type it in. It's easier. It's easier that way, Right? 1 Corinthians 15. Actually, I'm going to just read this chapter. I advise everyone to go read 1 Corinthians 15 because he really goes into it. Right? So let's go into it. So I'm going to start at verse. Let's see. I'm going to start at verse 35. But some man would say, how are the dead raised up? Because remember, the Messiah raised from the dead. And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not the body that shall be. But bare grain, it may chance of wheat and of sown grain. So basically, whatever you give in, that's what you're going to get out. Whatever you put in, that's what you get out. You read what you sow. But God give it to the body as it has pleased them, and to every seed his own body, right? All flesh is not the same flesh. So here we go. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. That's evident. There are also celestial bodies, which was the one you can see right now, and bodies terrestrial. So the sun, moon, stars. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, see, and another glory of the moon, 
and the glory of the stars, another glory of the stars, and one star is different from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. So here's the here's the key point. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in corruption. Now remember that when reading this. It is sown in corruption and raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness and it is raised in power. So you got corruption and weakness and dishonor in one body. Then when the resurrection come, it's incorruption, it's glory, and it's power. It is sown in a natural body. Here we go. That will be your earthly body, right? Corruption, weakness, dishonor. That will be your natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. That will be glory, power, and corruption. There's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. So you have two worlds. You have the, the fleshly body and then you have the spiritual body that's within you. Right? And so it is written, the first man, Adam, which means Adam of the flesh, the one that we walk in, the one that we are, you know, we're the first Adam, was made a living soul. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Now, I remember quickening spirit when he was made alive. He was alive. He had life. Right? How be it? So he was in the spiritual body. How be it? That was not first, which is spiritual. So the first Adam was not a spiritual being. He was not in a spiritual body. He was in an earthly body. He was made from dust or dirt, whatever. But that which is natural and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth. Earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Now don't bug out when you read that. Your spiritual body, he's in there. You know, he, he's in you. But like I said, the power of darkness, the earthly mind, has blinded the ones that don't believe in the first place, right? Um, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as it is heavenly, as is the heavenly, and are they also of the, are the heavenly. And as we have borne the images of the earthy, we shall also bear the images of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood will not hear the kingdom. Now, if you know, if you check out my other videos, I told you the Messiah himself said the kingdom with, is within you and that you're the temple of the Most High and his spirit dwells in you. So the kingdom, which is your spiritual body, dwells inside of you. That's the kingdom of heaven, right? Which is red. It is sown in corruption. So that's the kingdom. Neither does corruption inherit in corruption. Right? Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised and corrupt incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. Then shall, uh, then shall be uh, be brought to pass the saying that is written, "Death is swallowed up in victory." O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Sting of death is sin, and strength of uh, sin is the law. But thanks be to the Most High, which giveth us the victory through the Messiah. Right. So there's two worlds. There's heaven. There's earth, spiritual body, uh, earthly body, uh, <laughs> spiritually minded, righteousness, light, earthly minded, darkness, wickedness, Satan, God, Satan, good, evil, the sky, the ground. But uh, what was I going with this? Okay, so... Now that we got that out the way, it's more than one world, right? Right? 
But I see another law in my, this is Romans 7, in verse 23. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. What's the law of his mind? Let's keep going. And bringing me into the captivity of the law of sin, which is in my members. So, he tells you in verse 22 what the law of his mind is. He, del he delights in the law of God after the inward man. Now, the inward man would be the spirit, the invisible the spirit that you can't see, the voice that I always try to tell you to do good, right? If you read Hebrews 1 and 7, it says he makes his angels ministering spirits. So that spirit that's in you that uh, is trying to tell you to be do right things, the right thing, the lust just, but the flesh takes over, Satan takes over, right? If you don't walk in the spirit of the Messiah. But anyways, right? Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Now, remember who has the power of death? The devil, Satan. So that means this flesh is of the devil, right? How do I prove that? Let's keep reading. I thank God through the anointed Savior, our master, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. See, in his spirit, he serves the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Check that out. So who has the power of the law of death and darkness? Satan, your flesh, and your earthly body <laughs> is Satan. It's plain. It's, it's uh. But you have to walk in the spirit, like I said. So let's go to Galatians. So let's go to Galatians chapter 5. So your earthly body and earthly mind is subjection to the devil, sin, darkness, wickedness. All right? Let's go to Galatians, Galatians 5. This is the flesh. All right? So... This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led by the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh, check out the works of the flesh. Check this out. Are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. That don't sound like Satan to you, the devil to you. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Check that out. Envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of which I tell you, as I, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not in inherit the kingdom of the Most High, which is the spiritual body, right? That will be changed at the last trumpet, right? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. But they that are the Messiahs have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. Check that out. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Right. So I pretty much can just wrap this video up here. You know, I think I covered pretty much what I wanted to cover. Maybe I can bring out. Um, maybe I can bring out one or two more precepts. I think I already pretty much covered the basis, though. You know, um, let's go to First John three. Let's go to First John three. Right. Right. First John three. I'm going to start at verse 5. Whosoever uh, abideth in him, which is the Messiah, sinneth not. 
whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteous is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. So if you commit sin, if you walk in the lust of the flesh, which we just named some of the stuff of the flesh in Galatians 5, then you are of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God, which is the Messiah, the Holy Spirit, was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil, which we read in Romans 8 and verse number 3. Whosoever is born as God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. So the most high seed, whatever seed he decides to give you, may be. Uh, read verse 1 Corinthians 12 if you want to learn about um, these different words of the same spirit. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, faith, right? But above all, charity. But uh, anyways, which is love. And these little children, I think I'm good on that. No, I'm going to read that. In this little, in this, the children of God, we manifest the children of the devil. Uh, I read that wrong. In this, the children of God are manifest. And the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteous is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Like I told you, above all those things that I just named, love is at the top. Right. Um, I'm read it verse. I'm gonna read it verse eleven. Yeah. For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning that we should love one another, not as Cain. Now read. Go back to Genesis and read what happened with Cain, who was of that wicked one, of darkness, of an earthly mind, of Satan, of the flesh, walking in the flesh, the lust of the flesh. Right, and slew his brother. Wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brothers were uh, righteous. So Abel was walking in the spirit. He was walking by faith, right? He was walking by love and truth and sincerity. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Now remember, this world, this earth, is darkness, death, wickedness, right? We know that he. We have passed from death unto life. How do we do that? Through the Messiah, through the faith of the Messiah. Because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Right? Uh, that's plain, right? That's plain. Also, another thing like by life, I mean by light, right, right, I mean, I think it's pretty plain, but let's see, actually, let me go to John, let me go to John, and then I'm going to close out, this will be the last one. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall, you know the rest, shall make you free, shall set you free. All right, so John 1, verse, through verse, I'm going to read verse 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So, in him was life. Remember, God is light. So, the God of righteousness is light. The God of darkness is evil. Now, if you read Genesis, the Most High gave Adam this whole world. He was the, the ruler of this world. The first Adam that we read about in 1 Corinthians 15. So, that was the earthly man. He was... People would call him the God of this world. We sinned from the beginning. But remember, the Most High clothed Adam and Eve with coats of skin. Now, we're not going to get into that, but I'm going to just basically tell you the coats of skin was wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Right? But anyways, let's keep going. 
in him was life and the life was the light of men so uh when he puts this holy spirit in you that is your life and in the last trumpet you'll be raised in the spiritual body so i want to tell you if you believe in anything else you need to believe in the most high through his only begotten son the anointed savior yesha or whatever you want to call him you want to call him yahweh Shah, uh, you know there you go but all praises to the most high through his only begotten son the anointed savior who died and rose who we were quickened by him through him um love the most high keep his commandments Walk in the righteous fruits of the spirit. Don't lust after the flesh, which you can see with your own two eyes. Everything in this world, it's an illusion. Walk in the spirit. Walk in wisdom, knowledge, understanding, love, peace. Um, let's see. This is what Peter said. I said I was going to close out, but you know I got to get one more. All right? All right? Let's see. Verse Peter 3 and 9. Verse Peter 3 and 9. Not rendering, which means pain or repaying, evil for evil or railing for railing, but countrywise blessing, knowing that ye are unto thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. So don't pay evil for evil, right? Don't give into what they want you to be. Walk in the light. Walk in goodness and meekness, right? Right? And always pray for forgiveness and don't let your sins weigh you down. As pertaining to the second Ezra, I believe 16 and verse 76, do not let your sins weigh you down. Walk in the spirit and believe in the Messiah, Messiah that voice that's telling you to do good in your head. Walk in it, right? Don't listen to all these, your initial thoughts because remember, the flesh lusted to envy, right? The flesh lusted to to envy. Alright. It might be the devil that's the envy. Alright. Let's see. Alright. James 4 and 5. I just can't wrap it up. The spirit, you know, it got a hold on me. The most high spirit. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain? The spirit that dwelleth in us. Matter of fact, I want to get James 4. I meant to get this in the lesson. Right? James 4. And then we'll close out this time for real. If the most high wills. Unless he got some more precepts that he want me to bring out. Alright. James 4 and 1. From whence come wars and fighting among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust? So check that out. It's your own lust, your flesh. That war in your members. I told you your members is your body. The bo this body of death that we're in. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask receive not because ye, ye ask amiss. That ye may consume it upon your own lust. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world. Remember, there we go again. Is enmity with God. So the friendship of this world is enmity with God. What else is enmity with God? The flesh, your earthly body, your human brain. is lusted, right? Whosoever, therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in you, in us, lusted to envy? Check that out. So the spirit that lusted in us, I mean, that dwelleth in us, lusted to envy. This earthly spirit, of course, the earthly mind, the prince, the power of the air, the God of this world, which is wicked, which is darkness, evil, the flesh, earthly mind lesson at the women lesson at the men uh, which means a strong desire it means you want it really bad less means you want it really bad right praying for money praying for earthly gain joining 
fraternities or organizations to get earthly gain, to get earthly knowledge, bowing down to stuff that was man-made, which people say came from heaven, but it really came from a man taking his hand and cutting down a tree or crafting a stone together, and then people bowing down before it, right? But uh, yeah, that's it. So the flesh lusted to envy, right? So the flesh say, the spirit, God, walk in the spirit of the Messiah, of course, the spirit of the Messiah. Not the spirit of the flesh, but the spirit of the Messiah. So, uh, yeah, all praise to the most. I think I'm going to make God's son.